All right, welcome to Walk in the Park. And now you're going to learn to walk. Now you should know that walking is one of the hardest things to get right in animation. But on the other hand, it's a great place to start because once you've mastered walking, uh, the other aspects of animations may seem easier as well. All right, first of all, um, just like we talked about in the earlier episodes, you start with two extremes, the two main keyframes, and then you have a breakdown position uh, in the middle. And the breakdown position really describes uh, the motion and how it flows. And of course, uh, these would be the main extreme poses in a walk. Uh, this is a very typical walk, but uh, you, you, you get the idea. Um, and in the middle, uh, you have the breakdown pose. And the breakdown, again, here is extremely important because um, this is what really describes what kind of walk it is. So by altering the uh, breakdown, you can make all kinds of different walks. And this is a completely um, normal walk. And uh, you can see by just using these three poses, you already have something that looks uh, pretty good. And by altering the middle pose here, you can see we get something completely different. I've almost only altered the pose here in the middle, and we get a completely different type of walk. So now um, I'm going to set up a basic walk cycle in Blender, and uh, you can follow along as I do it. First of all, I've loaded the biped character up into Blender. And the first thing we need to do is to make sure that the feet are set to IK so they don't slide around. So I've already done that here. You can see the feet are IK and uh, the knees always point towards those uh, knee controls there. All right. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create the uh, main extreme uh, walk pose here. So I'm going to separate the legs out a little bit, right? And I'm going to, I'm also making sure that the, uh, we have auto keying on so that every change I make, every time I move a bone, uh, it records, uh, that movement. So I'm just going to put, uh, down the pelvis a little more so that he's actually touching the ground and, uh, you know, moving the toes up a little bit. And, uh, you know, just uh, also uh, rotate the pelvis a little bit um, so that he's kind of swinging his behind just slightly. And normally in a, in a walk, the arms will always uh, move opposite from the rest of the body. So I'm going to put, uh, because I have the uh, left foot forward, I'm going to make the right uh, arm go forward in this pose, right? And I have uh, auto IK on so I can quickly also pose the arms if I want to change uh, the way the arms uh, are posed. I'm going to just close the hands up slightly here. As you can see there I have auto IK on. All right, just put him a little bit more upwards as well. All right, and once I'm happy with this uh, pose, all I do is I select all the bones, hit I, and select lock rot scale so that it records both the location and rotation and scale of all my bones in the character. So now I can see uh, I have one keyframe uh, where all the uh, bones are uh, keyframed. All right. I'm just going to zoom in here. And what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to take the pose that we have and then we're going to mirror it uh, because 
uh, we want to make it opposite. So uh, if you go down here, there's a button uh, where you can copy the pose and you can either paste it or you can also paste it mirrored using this button here. So I pressed paste mirror and now um, when we move back and forth in time you can see it's going from one pose to another. It's actually going from the one pose to the same pose but mirrored. So this is very useful for doing a walk. You don't need to do uh, the opposite pose. The uh, computer can actually do it for us. Um, but at the moment, it's just going from the two extremes without the breakdown in the middle. Before we move on, though, I'll just take the original pose and put it, uh, you know, at the end and paste it without using any mirrored. Uh, and then um, I'm going to set the uh, end duration to be the last frame of the walk here using the E key down in the timeline, right? And that means when we play it back, uh, it's actually looping. It goes back to the original pose again. So it's kind of just skating along at the moment. So the next step, again, is to insert the breakdown pose. So I'll go right into the middle of the first two poses here. Then I can start to pose him and make sure that the right foot uh, uh, is, you know, on the ground. So the the on one to the right, uh, you know, side here will be on the ground, and the one on the left will be uh, up a little bit. All right. So I'm just moving this up. I'm also taking the pelvis and moving the entire character up as well, just so that he, you know, just uh, it has a little bit of an up and down motion. I'm also just putting a little bit of variation on the arms um, so that they, they don't look the same from the silhouette in this pose. Also, again, making the entire pose a little bit more asymmetrical uh, to get the walk to seem more uh, natural. All right. Now I've saved this and inserted a keyframe uh, and made this my my breakdown. And again, I'll copy this pose and paste it uh, in between the next ones. And now already you can see with so little work, we already have uh, something that looks, you know, passable. It's already, you know, an okay walk cycle. Of course, we can make this even better. And so uh, one of the things we need to adjust is the up and down motion of the pelvis. Right. So I'm just making him go a little bit more down as he hits the ground and then a little bit more up uh, before he hits the ground. And that just makes it look a little bit more natural. And of course, uh, you can adjust the exact up and down motion uh, by adjusting the interpolation curves in the animation curves editor. And I'm just going to expand that, right? And this is the up and down motion of the uh, of the pelvis. And of course, you can adjust the, the motion of all the bones in the body. But by just adjusting the uh, curves for the pelvis, you can completely alter the uh, look and feel of the walk cycle. So uh, I'm just going to, you know, smooth it out just a little bit, right? Um, so I'll, I'll just move the handles around until it's as smooth as I want it to be. I'm 
Well, they're going to minimize, uh, you know, forward and backwards motion of the pelvis as well, which will make it seem a little bit more natural. And as you can see, by just, you know, altering this pelvis bone, we're changing a lot of things about the way the walk uh, looks uh, by just changing this one bone. So that's a very uh, useful uh, way to adjust the walk. All right. And already we have something that looks pretty good. Created very, very quickly. All right. So we've sort of created like a basic uh, normal walk, but it doesn't have a lot of character. So uh, let's add some uh, variation on top of what we already have. All right. So I've taken out the, um, the breakdown posts we had before, right? We inserted the breakdown pose. And I'm going to go in here and add a different breakdown pose, a variation. So instead of the rather bland, uh, normal uh, walk we had before, I'm going to try something a little bit more fun. And instead of having him go, you know, up in the breakdown pose, I'm going to have him just, you know, go down. And that looks pretty fun, actually, already. Um, I'll just adjust the arms more, just to go out a little bit more. And then again, I'll insert keyframes in all the frames, copy the original and mirror it. And see, already we've created a completely different walk cycle. Uh, you know, by just altering the breakdown pose, we've completely altered the character and the way it moves. And of course, you can insert more keyframes in between this breakdown pose and the extremes. But, uh, but it's a good idea to wait doing that until you are happy uh, with the main poses you have here. And you can keep on experimenting uh, with just these basic poses until you have the correct uh, character that you're looking for. I'm just playing around a little bit with the uh, with the arms just to make sure that they uh, swing a little bit nicer. And again, I'm taking the pelvis bone and adding just a little bit more, you know, up and down with the pelvis. And I'm also just in between the breakdown and the, the you know, the uh, extreme. I'm just going to change the uh, the path of uh, the foot a little bit, I'm making it a little bit less extreme now. Um, but you can see we already have something that's pretty funky, and it was very easy and quickly to do it. And again, I've left the original uh, extreme poses uh, pretty much alone. And, um, you know, it's just quite easy and fun to just start experimenting with all kinds of interesting walks. Once you have something you like, you can also try to, you know, scale it up make it a little slower I'll set the end frame differently right and now it's a little bit more sort of as a sort of a slow uh, lazy walk than it was before 
All right, that's all. Uh, this should give you a pretty good idea about how to approach a walk cycle. And it shows you that uh, walking isn't that hard after all.